Imagine, a state university that is one of the nation's most respected academic institutions. Imagine that. Imagine a school with the largest ski instruction program in the United States. Imagine that. Imagine an institution with its own national championship athletic teams that is also located just minutes away from NBA basketball and professional hockey and baseball. Imagine that. Such a university sets fire to the imagination. The University of Utah looks big, and it is big. There are nearly 24,000 students, two recreation malls, five art galleries, four television production studios, and a nine-hole golf course. But big doesn't mean impersonal. Sure, the prospect of new challenges, new people, new ideas, and a focus on the future can be overwhelming. But it can also lead to a new sense of individuality. You know, it's really how you feel in a place that makes the difference. New freshmen register for their first classes in a one-to-one -one meeting with an academic advisor who helps them choose from hundreds of course offerings and 70 academic majors. In fact, the very bigness of the university makes it possible to find new friends who share similar interests and values. Student government, fraternities and sororities, intramural sports and dozens of special interest clubs and service organizations make the campus a place where you are limited only by your imagination. Numerous as they are, the social opportunities stand on the bedrock of academic excellence. One of the strongest liberal education programs in the country helps all students, regardless of major, to deepen their understanding of the arts, sciences, and humanities. Even more intense are the small, intimate classes taught by a hand-picked faculty in the U of U Honors Program. And consider the implications of 15 colleges and professional schools, a respected research library with two million volumes, museums of fine arts and natural history, a faculty with established national stature, and a stunning campus consciously designed to promote deep thought and an open exchange of ideas. Imagine that. Work if you're absolutely committed to saying something other than what you actually do say, okay? And Amy, what you have to do is really react like you expect him to say, I love you, okay. and he says this crazy thing, and so you decide you have to leave. Okay. Do I really have to say it? Do you want me to spell it out for you? I'm not sure. No, perhaps it is time we stop skirting the issue. We're going to have to deal with it sometime better now than when it's too late. And many institutions can teach us skills, but I think the, one of the signs of a high quality uh, school or institution is the one that teaches you to formulate your own ideas and opinions and back those up and be able to defend them. My opinions and viewpoints on many different things in life were changed by my experience at the university, not that they, I was taken one way or the other, but my perspective on many issues was broadened, and I was able to see more than one point of view. I think that that's another thing education does for you, is, is, is give you more of an open mind. And uh, many times, narrow-minded people are uneducated people. And uh, Roosevelt gives it some thought. What would I like to say to Mr. Churchill and the British people? And he takes some lines from Longfellow and writes them out in his own handwriting. Sail on, O ship of state, sail on, O union, strong and great. 
Humanity, with all its fears, with all the hopes of future years, is hanging breathless on thy fate. It has exactly the right impact. And Wilkie takes that to Churchill. Churchill goes on the BBC, and he reads this Longfellow poetry, hanging breathless on thy fate. What shall we say to our friends from across the Atlantic who have sent this elegant message of hope? Give us the tools, and we shall continue the fight.